Good evening and welcome to season two episode of Backwoods Investigations with Blimp. I am your host, team leader of the Southern Illinois Monster Hunters team, Blimp himself. And tonight, from Mecro, the Mountain Empire Cryptid Researchers Organization, I have the man, the myth, the legend, Tennessee's very own Mr. Sam Deloach is in. We will talk about Bigfoot, his theories, and more, and what he else he has to share. Thanks for coming on the show tonight, Sam. I do appreciate it, sir. Oh, thank you for having me on here tonight, Zach. I uh, really uh, appreciate you coming on. It's my pleasure. Thank you, sir. Well, I've been wanting to get you on here for a long time, but here we are, and this is finally happening. So especially thank you for taking time out of your night to come on the show. Not a problem. Not a problem. Looking forward to, to talking with you and, uh, yeah, seeing, seeing uh, what's going on. All right, so let's have some fun and let's get down to business. Start off, tell us who you are, what you're all about, and just go from there, bud. All right, Zach, thank you very much. <clears throat> My name is uh, Sam Deloach. I am the founder of the Mountain Empire Cryptid Research Organization, uh, formerly known as the I Not Bigfoot Group. And uh, we kind of morphed into the Mountain Empire Cryptid Research Organization. Uh, we have a, a you know great group of guys. Let me just go ahead and start off and say I've got a great group, core group of guys that I research with. Um, and our research area is mainly in an area in southwest Virginia called High Knob. And um, the, the, the guys that I research with, uh, one of the main, uh, my right-hand man now is Matt Bell. Uh, Matt has had an aggressive encounter himself, himself, Zach, uh, in uh, Indiana, and uh, we'll get him on uh, one of your next shows and, and let him uh, talk about his encounters. It's, it's incredible. But um, having that said, you know, we are a scientific-based research team uh, that we research in the tri-state area, that is the uh, Kentucky, uh, eastern Kentucky mountains. Southwest Virginia and Upper East Tennessee, and we're a scientific-based research team. It's no kill. I don't carry a weapon when I go out in the woods. Um, anybody that's researched with me will tell you I just I don't carry a weapon. I do carry a knife, but I don't carry a weapon. Um, just my preference. <clears throat> but we go out and we research for Bigfoot, and I've been doing it for about five years now. And what got me interested in it, Zach, was, you know, like maybe a lot of other people that you have spoken with over the years. And, and you know, it was growing up and seeing uh, In Search of with Leonard Nimoy and uh, Harry and the Hendersons, even that movie, uh, got me excited about, you know, this, this creature. And <clears throat> lo and behold, um, Finding Bigfoot. You know, we all know it's a TV show, and it's for entertainment purposes. But Finding Bigfoot actually had an episode um, on High Knob, Virginia. You know, they actually did the town hall in Saltville, Virginia, but they part of the episode was held in High Knob, Virginia, where one of our research areas is located. So that got me interested very much. If you know, they interviewed a deacon of a church. You know, whom I've got to meet and interview myself, um, which you can see that interview on YouTube at Darth Bill 68. And it's the uh, pilot episode with Jeff Wells. He's a deacon of a church. And, you know, he was on Finding Bigfoot. And after speaking with him and spending time with him, you know, the guy wasn't, you know, you know, yanking, yanking your leg or anything. So, you know, through the, year, through, through the past few years, man, I tell you what, Zach, it's, uh, it's, you know, I've not seen the creature myself. And, uh, you know, I don't care to say that. Never have. Never have I seen it. I believe I've heard the creature on a few different occasions. As a matter of fact, I know for a fact with uh, Michael Cook in Kentucky, uh, me and him heard uh, some knocks and a couple screams. So I know that for sure. But I've never actually seen it, Zach. So I've never seen the creature myself. Never smelled it. Never smelled it or anything like that. We've not caught the creature on game camera. I've never come across any teepee structures like um, 
Um, you know, a lot of people do. I've never. The only structure that I've come across, Jack, was a tree in the tree, and it was about 40 feet off the ground. And I've actually got that video on YouTube under the Micro channel. But it's 40 feet off the ground, Zach. And you cannot, it's a, a huge tree, a whole tree, that's up in two trees. And you're like, how did they get up there? And, you know, we're in the middle of nowhere. Um, so, yeah, it's just, you know, we've, we've done seminars. We've, uh, we've held Bigfoot Days up at the Bays Mountain Park here in Kingsport, Tennessee, with uh, uh, over 500 visitors came through in two days uh, to, to see me crow amongst other um amongst other speakers that we had. Uh, you know, it's just fun, man. You know, we get out. It's a brotherhood. Um, we all don't agree with each other on a lot of things, and that's okay, man, because you know what? We're all going for the common goal, and that's to prove the existence of the creature. That's the way it should be. So uh, you say uh, you've done research now for a while now. What have you found that would make you believe, since you say you have not seen one yet, uh, what have you found that in your research uh, and seen in the woods that would make you a firm believer, or are you still a skeptic? Well, you know, there's uh, what I, this is how I look at it, Zach. There's four categories, my friend. You have the non-believer, the skep, uh, which I, it's short for skeptical, that's a, hey, that's a term that you and I should coin right now in the Bigfoot community. <laughs> Somebody, a skeptic. So you got your non-believer, a skeptic, um, a believer, and a knower. Now, I'm a believer. I fall in that category. I believe this creature can exist. And, um, you know, just with the, like, you know, I was telling you, my buddy Matt Dell with his encounter, and also Tracy Arnold, whom I've known before, Matt Dell, and you know Tracy Arnold like I do. Mm -hmm. um, I've been out with Tracy on, on a couple of occasions and had the pleasure to go to the Ohio Bigfoot Conference with him and know his encounter very well, and I believe him. Um, you know, when you get around somebody, you know <clears throat> if they're telling the truth or not after you're, you're around them for a while. And and I believe Tracy 100%. And, you know, he, he researches them on the same basis along the same lines as I do. Now, Tracy's got a lot of technical equipment, and that's where I differ than some researchers. Um, Zach, I go out with make my cell phone, a backpack, and my hiking stick, and a, and a knocker. And, and that's it, you know, um, because, let's be honest, man, 95% of the time when we go out, we don't get anything. And somebody had said the other night, why, you know, why don't you do a TV show or something like that? Well, um, you know, or how do they get all that on Finding Bigfoot? How do they have all that stuff? Well, it's just a TV show. So, I mean, if we were to make one, it would be pretty boring. Um, but I want to bring real research. I don't want to bring something that's fake and give false hopes to, to somebody when we know it. You know, it's not true. You know what I mean? Right. Because that's like I tell everybody. Bigfooting uh, in reality ain't like it is on t on television. You have injuries, you have equipment breaks down, uh, you have t uh, your sound uh, recording equipment and your cameras malfunction. It's not all wine and roses. There is a lot of danger in it because people can get hurt. I myself have been hurt myself where I was on a solo expedition, almost cut my finger off. And there's, oh, yeah. there, there's not, it's nothing easy about it. It's very physically and uh, financially taxing. It is. It is. You know, and that's the, uh, one of the great things, you know, uh, Zach, is through the past few years, I've come to meet great, uh, many great friends. And a lot of, uh, a lot of you guys I was able to meet at Ohio Bigfoot Conference. And I, unfortunately, I'm not going to attend this year. Um, I'm going to go to the number one conference in the, uh, in the United States, which will be the ECBRO conference. Um, that's a, he has some great speakers. You know, sometimes it's not all about the celebrities, and I like Cliff and all those guys. They were great to meet them. Um, but somebody like you and I or, you know, Daniel or Tracy, we're doing solid research out in the field. Of a lot. I'm not saying they don't, 
but it's sometimes it's better to talk to somebody like us. And it's a little easier to talk to, you know. Um, so Daniel's got some great people showing up with Ken Carhart and uh, and Ron Moorhead. And, you know, you're going to be there meeting people and myself. And, um, so we're going to have a, you know, uh, if, if anything, I'll tell you what, man. I formed a brotherhood and some great friendships. And you know what? Maybe I may not be able to see this creature or prove its existence, but I've proven one thing, that you can form many friendships from this. And, um, you know, that's one thing I am grateful for. Because people ask me sometimes, you know, why do you do it? Well, a lot of it is making the friends, you know, um, and talking about the subject that's taboo to society. Because let's face it, Zach, you know, you know, my father's a skeptic, my mom, uh, even my wife, but she believes in me and what I do. And, you know, thinks there, there's a possibility of this creature being out there. Right. I mean, like, especially um, one thing that I was listening to this morning um, while I was getting ready for work, or yesterday one, I was listening to the latest episode of Bigfoot Eyewitness Radio, and one of my uh, previous guests, Kenneth Roberts, was on there. And mm -hmm. he told a pastor of a church, of all people, the pastor said Bigfoot's not real. He said, "Well, you're." He said, "Well, you're insulting God because God created Bigfoot and they're one of His creatures." Mm -hmm. And that struck that struck me too, especially. Um, I mean, there's a lot of people out there that think we're nuts. I've got people in my own family that think I'm friggin' crazy. Oh, yeah. And mm -hmm. I mean, I just keep and I just keep throwing it right back at them, and I say. Everybody thought that the people saying a giant squid, the gorilla, the coelacanth, and all the, all the primates and the sharks and everything, they all thought that those were all figments of people's imagination, drunk sailors tale and old legends until they actually found them. Yeah. It's just a matter of time before science recognizes Bigfoot as a legitimate creature and it's, rec and it's recognized in the scientific community after it's discovered. Yeah, you know, and it's going to be a, uh, and Dr. Meldrum said it best, um, and believe it or not, uh, it was an interview that I was watching that Rick Turriolo had uh, done with Dr. Meldrum, I believe it was in 2016, after one of the conferences, and Dr. Meldrum said it best, it's going to be a citizen researcher like yourself, Zach, or myself, that will uh, discover this creature, um, or just some plain old ordinary citizen, you know. 99% of the sightings that you hear that people have, they're not out looking for Bigfoot, Zach. They're driving along in their car, or they're walking on a you know, path, or they're camping. You know, they're not out Bigfooting. Um, it's people that, that, and that's what makes it even more believable um, at times is people that aren't Bigfooting. They just happen to, you know, come across it. Right. Um, it's all by accident, pretty much. 95% of the time you see a Bigfoot or you have an encounter with one, you see it in the woods, you hear it at night or during the day. It's usually by accident. You're always unprepared. Yes. Yeah. And think about it. If you and folks are like, well, how come you can't get a clear picture? Well, where's your phone most of the time? It's in your pocket. I mean, especially if you're hiking. It's not going to be out in your hand. You're not going to be out. You know, you're going to be concentrating on the ground. Well, you see something, you got to take the phone out of your pocket, to unlock it, turn the camera. You know what I'm saying? It takes a few seconds. To That's about that. five or six seconds of critical time yes. right there. Of, yep, of very critical timing right there. And not only that, you're going and you're fiddling and everything. Your hands are shaking because your adrenaline's racing. You're just going to take even longer unless you unless you got nerves of steel. Right. Right. You know, and, you know, again, that, that, that pulls around to, you know, I've done a lot of research um, over the past few years. Um, you know, we I'm glad to have access to private land. Uh, we also research on national forest. Um, but, you know, I was able last year to do several interviews through uh, the uh, Bigfoot BS series uh, that I did, you know, and everybody can check that out on YouTube, Darth Bill 68. And there's 10 episodes and a pilot episode, and it was great interviewing local folks, Zach, that had sightings or encounters 
um, uh, around our area, which gives it, you know, you know, face it, we live in the oldest mountains in the United States. So if a creature was going to exist, why, well, you know, if this is perfect habitat for it, you know, why don't we catch them on game camps? Well, we don't, we're only covering them. Not even 1% of the, of all of the wild lands that we have in the United States. You know, it's so vast. Right. And, uh, like, uh, Daniel Benoit was on the live chat and he says it could take longer if the camera is in a backpack. That's very, very, yes. very, oh, uh, uh, important point to point out and everything. That's the reason I always, if whenever I'm in the woods or I'm driving down the road in the backwoods, I have my dash cam on all the time or I have my uh, dash cam turned on and tied around my neck where I'm able to watch. And I always keep a uh, camera with a tripod in the in my uh, passenger seat whenever I'm going down the road in case I need to jump out and film something. No, that's great. You know, and I'm, I'm fortunate to usually have, you know, quite a few people with me when we go out. And, uh, you know, fortunate to have uh, somebody that has a good quality camera, you know, that's focused just on, you know, filming and all that. And uh, so, you know, I mean, it's we have a great group of people. That's the whole thing. You need to surround yourself with great people. And, you know, all of you, you know, kind of need to think alike. Uh, you know, and that's how we think. They were... We're scientific-based research, and that's, you know, that's what it's going to take to prove the community's DNA, Zach. And I, it's unfortunate to say that, but, it, you know, it may take a dead body or something of that sort to, to prove the existence of this creature to the public. I mean, that's the only way that's going to be accepted. That's ex I, mean. I mean, like, and you and me, we're both no kills, but... Honestly, I would if it come down to the wire and it come down to my life or one of the members of my team's lives, I'll shoot to kill whenever it comes to yes. self defense. Yes, always. I mean, and I believe that a hundred percent too. And uh, you know, that's through you know, a lot of the, our team members carry weapons. I just don't. And um, you know, that's that's the thing. You know, they've always taught me, Sam. You know, when it comes to your life or or, or the animal's life, and you got to shoot, man. Um, so I understand that, but you know, I hate it. But it's gonna it's gonna take you know DNA. But you know, the thing is, what's really cool, and I've become to have an open mind over the past month or so, Zach. I, you know, I've um, opened my mind back up to listening to other people's research. Um, like I said, I may not agree with it, and you know, it's it, you know that's just my opinion. Everybody has a, their own opinion. Nothing's been proven or disproven here when it comes to bigfooting. So who's right? Who's wrong? Nobody's right. Nobody's wrong. Right. You know, there's no. We know there's no bigfoot expert. Um, there are some that are pretty close, like Dr. Meldrum and Dr. Bender Nagel. It's I'll say a prayer for him. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I know you know the news of Dr. Bender Na Bender Nagel. Um, I, I just you know we'll say a prayer for him. But you know these are you know we're we're losing the uh, the very crucial basis our base in the Bigfoot community. Yeah, we're um, losing the pioneers of the community. That's the it. You said it right there, the forefathers, the pioneers, um, you know, who's brought this to light. Because yeah. right now, we're down to John, Dr. John Bendernagel. We're about to lose him. And as far as I know, all we got him and Bob Gimlin left. Yeah, it is, you know. Um, and, yeah, so... And I hear stories. This is this is you know the, one of the possibilities why I say I've got an open mind. Um, one of the reasons, Zach, I think people have sightings. Possibility here that folks have sightings in uh, the woods of these creatures. Could it be a spirit? Because I believe, and I, I saw a ghost in 1987 with my father at Gettysburg. No. It, I saw it, hundred percent. So I know there's spirits out there. Are we? Could we be seeing uh, this? You know, spirit of this creature. Is this why Native Americans are always talk of spirit of this creature, living and in spirit? I mean, it, it could be a great possibility why some of 
some folks are having these uh, sightings that they're having. I don't fit uh, one. Uh, you talked about seeing ghosts at Gettysburg. I've been to Gettysburg about 10 years ago, whenever I was about 11 or 12. Don't feel alone. I've seen uh, evidence and felt spiritual contact in Gettysburg. Mm -hmm. Out, out yeah. there on Little Round Top and everything, I heard musket fire and cannon fire. Yeah. And they weren't even doing yeah. reenactments that day. Yeah, that's the, uh, well, here's the thing, though, Zach. The, they're, you're not allowed to shoot. Uh, they do two reenactments a year where they shoot cannons and guns. Other than that, there's no. There, you're not allowed to fire any kind of or reenactment weapons of any sort. And same thing with us, the wheat field. We we definitely heard a musket shot there. Me, and my wife, my daughter, and another group of people. We didn't even know. Um, so yeah, you know, <laughs> could some of these Bigfoot creature sightings be spirit? I, I don't know. I, it could be. I think it's very much possible. Um, I, I would believe that more than I would, you know, that that they're alien. I don't think they're alien. Uh, I don't think they come in and out of portals. Um, I just that's just the way I believe, uh, and that's about as far as I'm going to take it. So, like um, while you was talking there, I was watching the chat. Glenn Mink says. Unless you carry two dozen cameras with each setting possible, you're only going to get the pick available to you, blurry or not. Valid point. And then uh, Daniel has a question. He says, does he feel it's more important to prove Bigfoot exists or just to enjoy the adventure and the mystery? Uh -huh. he, I guess he's talking to me. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, you know, I want... I want to prove this creature exists, and I want to now more than ever, um, because of these valid sightings that we've gotten over the past year. Uh, the several people that came in to the Bigfoot days and brought us a, a physician, man, brought us some hair sample. Uh, they just happened to be camping out on High Knob, and it was about seven foot up in the tree. So, I mean, you know, I want to prove this creature exists. But on the flip side, Daniel, I also love going out with all of my friends and just being out in the woods. Um, I think that's a, a big part of it, too, is getting out, seeing how others research, how they interact in the woods, and uh, just being out in nature. But um, I definitely want to prove that this creature exists. Uh, I wouldn't have cameras out in the woods like we do uh, right now. We've got seven in one area, and we've just picked up the solo camera that we have in the upper research area and we're going to move it. We've got hunters coming through there, so we don't want to, uh, we don't want to have a camera. We don't want to be doing any research to that when we know there's other people. You know why? Because if you see a, a half heel print, where well, you're going to automatically think it's Bigfoot. But yet we know hunters came through there because of the game camera. But yeah, I mean, I do it for the, uh, you know, to prove the existence of this creature, for sure. But I do it for, you know, to go out and have fun as well in the woods. I mean, I'm sure Daniel does, too. Here's a... Fact, I know he, yeah. Go, go ahead. I'll uh, This one can yeah. work. All right. Bobcat Wong has a question for you, and this one's a real, real head, uh, head thumper. Could we have Bigfoot DNA in our own body? He's asking me this. Yes. What's your do, thoughts on that? Do we have Bigfoot DNA in our own body? Yeah, he's asking, do you think so? I don't know. I mean, I'm going to say no on that, but, um, you know, maybe one of our uh, folks on the live chat can enlighten Bobcat with some information I don't have. Uh, I'm sure that through our genes, Zach, uh, you know, relative with AIDS, you know, we don't have a family tree anymore of primates. We have a family bush. You know, <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, I mean, we really do, man. The I think it was Homo naledi, N N A L E D I. Uh, the um, it's a, a race of humans that stood like three or four feet tall as adults. Was uh, discovered in the Star Cave system back in 2013 or something. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I mean. And that was discovered in 2013, Jack. So, you know, they're making discoveries every year of stuff like this. 
so our family tree of primates just evolves into a, a bush. But I, I don't know uh, to the to the uh, listener on the live chat or you know a viewer or whatever. Like, I, I don't know. I can't answer that. Um, Sorry. Uh, you're you're good. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't expect you to have an answer. I sure as heck don't. So don't feel bad. Well, I'm not gonna, you know, sit here and, and I'm black and white about it. So I mean, there's there's no gray area. You see what I'm saying? It's right. Either you're right or you're wrong. Right. Um, and that's just the way it's got to be. You think about it, man. Zach, here's here's one for you. What other creature out there that we know proved that ex that we know's existence? What other creature has a woo? community behind it and mind speak none <laughs> so you know, i thought about that today a little bit but you know so if we're going to prove this to science uh we have to you know take a serious approach about it uh Daniel's asking the kicker questions here. Uh, another one he says do you believe in the human hybrid theory that Fred Caney says they are Man, Daniel's got some great questions, as I knew he would. Uh, Daniel's a great researcher. Let, let me take a second and uh, give Daniel Benoit a plug. Um, Daniel knows the whole entire history behind my Bigfoot career. And, um, you know, he's one of the few people that, that does. Him and maybe about five others. But, you know, Daniel gave me my first podcast shot, Zach, mm -hmm. years ago. 2014 or 2015. Um, you know, so I, I, I give kudos to Daniel and I don't forget about him, you know, giving me that first shot and, uh, and, and being on that podcast show. But, uh, the human ape or the human ape hybrid theory could be, I, I don't know. Like I said, I, you know, you gotta keep an open mind. We don't, I don't know. I, I know that it's a creature and a living flesh and blood. I, I don't know that. I believe that. And um, others, knowers will just, you know, will tell you that they're definitely flesh and blood. Um, you know, like Cliff Barrett, uh, Bobo. Uh, you know, although Bobo and Cliff, uh, there's an interview I watched with them, and I know it was Cliff, or I'm, I'm sorry, Bobo, had some uh, blue lights follow him, or follow a big foot during one of his encounters. You ever heard that? No, I haven't yet. Yeah. Yep, you sure did. Of course, there's a lot I still don't know. <laughs> I'm not very informed. I'm not very there's informed. There's so much stuff out there, you know, uh, like the Paul Freeman footage. You know, well, it doesn't get a lot of play. And I've asked that question before, and I think you were on a show with us. And I, why doesn't it get a lot of play like the Patterson Gillen does? I think it's pretty valid. Right. Um, you know, well, basically, it's, in my mind, the reason Paul Freeman footage doesn't get uh, as much hype and attention as the patterson Gilman footage is because uh, because Roger Patterson and Bob Gilman staked the claim uh, as proving uh, having footage of a Bigfoot in its natural habitat. And that, they staked the uh, claim on that one, and that's basically the Holy Grail whenever they should be paying attention to other things, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. I want to talk on that one a little bit uh, with uh, Daniel and you talking about the human ape hybrid. Um, okay. I don't think I'd, I believe that they are not because I read an article uh, some time ago uh, that Joseph Stalin back in the Soviet Union back in uh, the 19 teens. Um, he was. Uh, he tried to. Uh, birth a ar an army of super soldiers by crossbreeding male sperm with a female embryo from an ape and it was a stalemate because they yes. didn't match yes i know about that sure do so that's where i stand on that i don't think they could be a human ape hybrid because even sci even scientists in history have tried that and it was a stalemate right but you know there again um, how, you know, you, you just we just don't know. That's the whole. I always leave with more questions than I do answers, Zach. 
when it comes to the Bigfooting uh, community and Bigfooting out in the woods. You know, well, you hear a sound. Oh, what was that sound? Man, then you start thinking about it. So you're you're leaving with more questions than you do answers a lot of the time. Right. That's what I tell everybody. You go in the woods looking for Bigfoot. Uh, I go in the woods not try, not looking for Bigfoot. It's uh, it's uh, not gonna, you're not really. If you go in there looking, I believe they can sense that you're actually paying more attention to everything. You got to go in there. Uh, with a clear head and everything and even whenever I go in the woods not looking I, and I find evidence of them in the area I come out with more questions than I did when I went in mm -hmm. Yeah, you know and I, I I caution a lot of people, you know to use good judgment um, You know check out the researchers who they follow, you know, we just don't want to give false leads and impressions um, I have come to find out for myself, and I can speak for myself, that a lot of the, the tree breaks, uh, I know for a fact, um, up in one area where we know there's a lot of bear activity, they like to uh, climb the little sapling sack, and they'll bend them over and break them and eat the leaves. And you, you can see it on several trees. And, uh, you know, we know for a fact that, that we, that's bear activity. Um. Uh, you know, it's, so when I come across tree breaks and, you know, whatnot, I can't, I don't put a lot into it unless it's a pathway. You, you see what I'm saying? If you've got a good pathway going, let's say in a woods and you've got some tree breaks, well, something's definitely walking through there, Zach, and breaking those trees. But if you've just got a tree break here and then one 30 yards over there, maybe, you know, one way over there. And I don't put too much uh, into it, into it. But if it's a pathway, and I've only seen this once in uh, in our research area, where you know we've had a pathway go through, and um, you know, like I say, it's I, I tend to discount a lot of that to nature. Nature can do funky things to trees. Oh yes, and they can, man. You know, especially in the area that we live, especially where you live. You can have these little miniature tornadoes, I don't know what you would call them, but this little wind gust that will come down and swallow up a tree like it's nothing. And you, you look at it and it's like, what the, you know, what the heck broke the tops out of that tree, you know, or what broke this over? Right. Um, yeah, so nature and the trees can grow funny. They're going to grow where the light is. I don't care, you know, where it is, the, that tree sapling is going to grow where that light. Is. Exactly. Every single time. And you know that. Right. You, um, I mean, they, they teach you that whenever you're in junior high and grade school science, a plant or a, any kind of plant life, wherever the light, uh, the UV rays from the sun is going, if you cover it up and there's, if you yeah. put like put a little bit of a canopy over that flower and you let the light shine around it, that plant life is going to shoot out towards the light. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Daniel's. Any more questions on there? Yeah, yeah. Daniel's. All right, shoot them off. Uh, Daniel says, "What is your take on alleged Bigfoot structures? Do you think some people? Uh, do you uh, think some people think every break or structure is Bigfoot related?" Well, I, we just covered that, didn't we? So you know, <clears throat> I like I said, I've only come across the, you know, and Steve Shaky Peck um, says it's nature related, so I have to really keep that in the back of my mind. Um, you know, Steve Shaky's been around for a long time. You know, we discovered this a few years ago, but it's a, uh, it is Zach. It's a huge tree, man. Um, it's forty foot up and about forty foot up in the air, and the base of it is forty foot up, and it comes all the way down. To, almost to the ground and it's wedged in between some other trees and that, that's hard for me to believe that you know nature did that but right. it could have you know um, but as far as the structures yeah I think Daniel agrees too that um, a lot especially in these national forests to get boy scouts out and about they're building stuff all the time lean tos teepee structures oh I'm guilty uh, of like that. that I was a boy scout for years and they taught us how to taught us that stuff yep. Primitive yep, survival. I was a boy scout too. Yeah, I was, I was a boy scout too. Yep, sure was, big guy. 
um, in, in uh, Philadelphia. But yeah, so but there's a lot of things though that uh, you know I'm sure Daniel has come across. Daniel's you know been out with way way more than I have. So he's probably come across stuff that he can't explain. I just haven't. And, you know, I would rather sit here and tell you that I haven't than tell you that I have. But I, I really haven't. Zach. There's been a few things I've questioned, but nothing that I would, you know, go to the bank with and say, hey, it's Bigfoot related. Right. Um, like Ed Brown says, be very critical of what you find. But yes, Ed Brown. Uh, who's Ed Brown? Ed Brown, uh, <laughs> Ed Brown got me there. He you, hear, you know everybody says, who's Ed Brown? Who's Ed? Um, you never heard that? Yeah, you yeah. You heard that? Okay. A certain individual, a friend of ours from B County, Texas, Baltimore Galvan Jr. is on the chat, and he's asking, what made you a believer, Sam? Uh, what made me a believer was talking to all of the, the local folks around here who, you know, I can trust. A lot of the, um, I don't know, man. Um, it's just, it's very, very hard for me to put it in words. I, I guess you could say, just just like I said, talking to all of the, the, the folks that I know, I've never come across it. Um, I'm a believer, I'm not a knower. I'm not. I'm, I might be a little skeptical. I guess you'd have to be if you're a believer. But um, talking with all the folks and all of the reports, all of the sightings that have been re reported across not only you know the United States, across the world, going back for centuries among the Native Americans as well, um, it's hard to discount all of these people um, and say that they're all lying. Okay. Um, if it is, it's the biggest hoax in history. But for me, it's hard for me to discount that. So that's why I believe that there's a creature out there uh, that exists among us. I believe that there's several species of this creature. Small, large, different colors, skinny, fat. Um, you know, they're, I think that they carry some of the same characteristic capabilities as humans and as far as different colors of hair uh, whether it be black blonde cinnamon red uh, different heights different weights uh, different personalities but that's what made me a believer is all these people wasn't the show finding bigfoot wasn't you know, it's anything like that. It wasn't Dr. Meldrum. It's believing all of the ordinary folks, all of the local folks, all the ordinary people you talk to. That's what made me a believer. Um, very, very hard for me to discount a deacon of a church, well known in the community. Um, you know, only been back to this spot uh, three times since 1995. That's, you know, just too scared to go back. Thinking, you know, the guy that researches with me, Matt Dell. When he stands next to you and talks to you about it, that you can't help but have your hair on, on your arm stand up. You know, you had an aggressive encounter. I'm not going to give it away. It's going to be a great show for you. But it's hard to discount that. That's what made me a believer about the mark, right there. Um, not because I not because I saw something, because I haven't. You know, you know, and I make it very clear, Zach, I have not seen anything. You know. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Bobcat Wong asked another one, and uh, this is one that people on the chat are really as wanting me to ask. Uh, Bobcat Wong is asking, does Bigfoot go in and out of portals and cloak? Where's your standing? Well, you know, this question's been asked probably a thousand times, and, you know, my belief on it is, as I said at the first of the show, I take a scientific approach to it. Um, cloaking, no, I think a lot of people take that term, Zach, and, and, and intertwine it with camouflaging. Right. So I think, yes, I think that they camouflage very well as, like, such as barred owls or masters at it. Um, you know, uh, several other creatures that are out there in the woods. So, you know, I think that they camouflage very well. And no, I don't think they travel through portals at all. 
period. Uh, but some people do. I mean, and that's fine. That's fine. I just don't believe it. That's why I say about a lot of uh, things. I go and I say, Bigfoot is a master of the forest. It's the a master of its environment. It and like any animal, deer, barred owl. Uh, bear, they can move very swiftly and very quietly through the woods, and they could be hiding right in plain sight. Like a perfect example, whenever in the end of Harry and the Hendersons, whenever Harry goes back to the woods, yep. they could be standing right in front of you, uh, standing still, and you wouldn't realize it 20 foot away until they actually move. Whenever they showed the the three or four other Bigfoot and the little one standing right there in plain view, you thought they was trees standing there. Yeah, yeah, and I think there's hot spots, um, you know, more than others. I think that there's just uh, a lot of areas that they travel through. I think they use the ridges a lot, especially up through the Appalachian, Appalachian chain here. They use all of the, uh, you know, the ridges from smaller mountains to bigger mountains. They're masters at, at uh, being elusive. I mean, you know, I... <laughs> You can spend as much time as you want to out in the woods. It's, you know, like I said, I've, I've spent a lot of time in the woods as a Boy Scout. You know, on, on my honor, I will do my best to do my duty. I know that, you know. So the, the whole thing is, um, I think a lot of people, a lot of folks out there that say they see, you know, five, six, ten, twenty of them at a time. I, it's just hard for me to believe that. Um, you know, it's just, it's just tough for me to. To believe that because I've never seen you know one myself you know so right um uh, there's a Daniel was asking this one just out of curiosity uh, asking didn't you have a uh, spoke like had a, a sighting whenever you were a kid did I yes no okay no I had no 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 I, I what I think he's referring to uh, whenever I was a kid that was that um in 1987 in uh, Gettysburg, I saw the ghost with that, my dad, and uh, that was right around the as you come up around the corner of Devil's Den on the when you're in the car on the motor trail. Yeah, you come up around there. There's three cannons on the right side, um, and this uh, Union soldier had his uh, left, right leg up against the tree, and he turned and as we were coming up, he turned and looked at us, Zach. And he walked off, and as he got about halfway across, he just disappeared, man. It was, uh, it was incredible, man. It was, it was nuts. But no, that's what I'm saying. I, I, I haven't seen any. I don't... That's got to be what Daniel's talking about. It, it has to be what he's talking about. It probably is. Um, yeah. Uh, I got a, a personal question. Uh, you said yeah, you're with uh, Mountain Empire Cryptid Research Organization. Are Do you guys yeah. pri just strictly research Bigfoot or do you do other cryptids? Uh, we do other cryptids and that is a current project that Matt and I are working on right now. I'm not going to reveal too much, but uh, it's not in, this, uh, not in this area right here, but we're working on another project um, about another cryptid that uh, <clears throat> that's going to be it's, it's going to be phenomenal. Um, it's going to be a documentary. Uh, and that's about all I can say. But it's, a, it's not about Bigfoot. It's about another cryptid. And um, it's going to, it, like I say, we're, it, we're going to bring you what happened. Okay, so it's going to be a week-long deal of what happened while we were there. And hopefully we'll, we'll get uh, from, you know, research we've done, um, We'll get some major activity and, you know, hopefully put together a great piece. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's why we're called Micro. Um, you, we've got shirts we sell, and Gary Bort of Bort's Graphics here in Kingsport, Tennessee, does all of our artwork. And we're coming out with another shirt right now uh, that's currently being worked on by some uh, Micro members for a new design. But on the current design, Zach, we have a Bigfoot Mothman and a dog man. So <clears throat> we're gonna add a few more cryptids to the new design and um, you know, we're gonna kinda expand it out there. Uh, Matt and I both focus on the Bigfoot aspect of it. 
we have a, a core member of the, by the name of Charlie Earl Lawson, and he's our historian. Jack, this guy knows more about cryptids uh, than anybody I know of. Um, he's just well versed on the history of cryptids in our area locally. Um, you know, so he's another core member that we've got. Then, you know, we've got other members as well that I'm not going to name. But you know, I mean, it's just we got a great group of people. When we go out on our expeditions, we always, you know, we try to keep it at about 12 to 15 people. Um, I don't know, you know, Zach, when you go out, but you don't, we don't like to have a whole lot of people out there, you know, it just uh, tends to get a little out of hand. And the research kind of gets to something different, you know. So, you say but yeah. you guys research other cryptids. What other cryptids? In your area, are there? I mean, this is a oh, learning man, show. It's not. Is, it's not strictly Bigfoot. Of, well, this, we call it the home of Dog Man. Okay, now others will say the home of Dog Man is in Michigan. We disagree with that. The home of Dog Man is in a little little town over here called Appalachia, and <clears throat> the Dog Man um, story over here. Uh, I had to let little Charlie Charlie tell you the specifics on it, but it's something like this lady, um, this dog inseminates this lady, and I don't know, man, it's just, you have to, I have to let Charlie uh, tell about it, but yeah, you've got that, the uh, black triangles over high knob, the, the rup, the rup is another kind of a creature um, over here um, that uh, eats goat, goats and sheep. And like leaves the legs laying around and uh, just, just yeah, just man, this, you know, we call it the wood booger. The Bigfoot around here is called the wood booger. And Norton, Virginia is one of, I think, a handful of places in the United States that actually um, has the creature protected. A Bigfoot sanctuary um, have you is what they, uh, they have it as. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm always for, I'm not just stri like with my team, the Southern Illinois Monster Hunters. We're, that's the reason I don't say we're the Bigfoot, Re Southern Illinois Bigfoot researchers, because we have so many more cryptids here in Illinois that go outside Bigfoot. We've got the Enfield of Horror, the Stump Pond Serpent, the Bull Valley Monster, the Tuttle Bottoms Monster, the Demon Panther in Alexandria County. I mean, and not only that, we've had reports of Thunderbird in the past. Yeah. There's more out there than just Bigfoot being reported. Yeah. Well, we saw a panther on I Knob, a uh, black panther. Me, my wife, my brother-in-law, my sister-in-law, my nephew, for a fact, 100%. Um, and I tell you what, Zach, it looked like it had some sort of a collar around its neck. What had happened, we were, um, we were going to a new place that I'd never been up there. And my brother-in-law was, uh, we were in his Toyota Tundra. He was driving, and my sister-in-law was in the, uh, in the front with him. I was on the right side. But this thing jumped up onto the road. He slammed his brakes on. It kind of turned and looked for a second. Then, uh, Zach, it jumped like a scale to six-foot cliff. Definitely Black Panther. Not a question even asked about it. Wow. I, I mean, it's, yeah, dude. I, so, let me tell you. They, they say they don't exist up there. We saw it. We saw it. Um, and that's the third time that my brother-in-law has seen a black panther up there. Yeah, because there's been reports of, bl of a black panther here and just in my in my hometown of Crab Orchard uh, that massacred a, a bunch of goats. And uh, it's a, the lady that saw it. It was the owner of Country Care at Creations just right down the road from the school I went to. And it killed every one of her goats. They found the footprint in their garden. And then they seen it down south of Crab Orchard going towards Curl Springs on Saraville Road. And... A lot of people keep saying that there's no wolves and there's no panthers uh, in their area whenever you don't know what the wildlife department of your area has turned loose to re, uh, repopulate and, con and do population control. Yeah. Well, do you, let me ask you this, do you think black panthers are elusive themselves? Have you ever seen one like out in the wild? I've seen I've seen a regular mountain lion, the tan-colored mountain lion, but I have yet to see a black panther. Okay, so... If they're that elusive, then that just goes to show you how elusive a Bigfoot is. Right. You know, and if it has knowledge like us, and it's smart like us, then sure as heck, man, it can, you know, it can 
it can definitely avoid people. Exactly. Without a doubt. Because with a black a Black Panther, the well, I heard whenever they did Lions in the Backyard episode on Ma on Monster Quest uh, about ten years ago, they said the odds of a black uh, cougar being born in a litter of kittens from Mother Mountain Lion is like one out of a million. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't have been surprised you said you, it had a collar around it, or it looked to be. I wouldn't have been surprised if the wildlife department hadn't tagged it and they was GPS tracking it. Yeah, well, you know, what the what I was told, this is what I was told, was that they had actually let loose some mountain lion panthers to uh, something about being in cohorts with the uh, insurance company. They were getting tired of paying out for vehicles getting hit by deer. So they were trying to, uh, they let loose all of these cats to uh, try to downsize some of the deer population and try to help out the insurance companies from paying out all this money. Now, whether it's true or not, I don't know, but that's what I was told. Uh, you know, which is kind of valid in a way, you know, but, uh, you know, why would it have a collar around its neck? That's what the, that's what we were all kind of questioning after the fact of being surprised as hell that we saw Black Panther. Well, that, that sounds pretty plausible, and if not, they're pro they're most likely migrating. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we all research different. I can't wait to get to the uh, conference, uh, switching gears a little bit, meeting, getting to meet you. Um, I'm looking forward to all of this going out to the coal roads and doing, uh, you know, an investigation or two or five or nine, whatever we're going to do, and uh, different times of the day, Zach. I think we all need to kind of maybe go out different times. Um, Daniel's going to have enough people there that, uh, you know, he's got a good solid conference going. Um, I'm proud of him. He's got, got some great people. Um, we're all, there's a bunch of researchers that are going to be there that research different. And I want to see how everybody researches. You know what I mean? Right. Looking forward. Looking very, very much forward to it. Have you ever been to the Ohio Bigfoot Conference, Zach? No, I wanted to. La I was going to go this last year, but I got laid off because state cop grounded our truck and we was laid off for 13 days. And I was going to use that paycheck to get to Ohio and back. And, oh, uh, uh, yeah, that pretty much got canned. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's something uh, to get to, but um, your number one conference this year surely is going to be uh, ECBRO by far. Um, oh, I, I wholeheartedly agree. Yeah. Um, I, I'll tell you right now, and this is some news, and if Daniel's listening, um, he might be a little, I'm definitely saddened by it if, if we can't get worked out, but my boss actually takes vacation at that time, at the end of June and the 1st of July, because of July 4th, and um, if that's the case, um, then I may have to uh, work, which, you know, if, if that's the case, then um, then. So be it, I'll have to work. But we're trying to get worked out. Um, he knows this is very important to me uh, to be there. A lot of good, my good friends are going to be there, like Tracy Arnold. You know, uh, Tracy's you know, a great researcher, too. And these guys have only furthered my research. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, they really have, you know. And it's getting out, just getting out with these guys and, and seeing how they research and what equipment they use. Um, and how they go about doing it. Right, I mean, and all that, you brought up earlier in the interview that there's no Bigfoot or cryptid experts in the world, and whoever claims to be, they're wrong. Um, another, uh, one guy, uh, I ain't gonna mention his name, put me down because of last show I did. I was doing a post, uh, Facebook Live, uh, uh, just basically viewer feedback uh, feed. And he put me down saying I'm no expert. I don't claim to be no expert. I mean, I'm young. I'm only 22, almost 23 years old. But uh, especially people will go and tell you there's no experts, but there's people out there that have been at it more longer and they're more wise than the other person. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, doesn't matter what age you are. Um, it's what how much time and the quality of time, not the quantity of time you put in. Right. Anybody can go out for hours in the woods, but it's the quality of time you put in. 
um, not when I'm out in the woods and everybody that goes out with me will tell you that I'm not only checking out to see if we can see what's out in the woods, but I'm looking on the ground to see what edible plants there are, especially mushrooms. Um, I think that's a, a food source that they take advantage of. I know squirrels do for sure on um, a lot of the uh, ball light mushrooms. Uh, they love them. And so, you know, we're always looking around to see what kind of food uh, sources are available and teaching yourself what's out there. You know, I tell folks, they ask me, what do you take out the woods with you? You know, take you a little field guide about your plants that are in your area, your native plants. You know, don't be going to get the field guide for, you know, uh, California and, and North Pacific when you live in the eastern United States and vice versa. Uh, that's the only way that you're going to learn what's out there. And, you know, you may need those sometime in survival mode too, man, you know. Right. You know, you're going to get stuck in the woods and get hurt, like you said. You, you can get hurt out there, you know. A lot of people, you can just fall and twist your ankle. Right. Um, there was a question asked on here by Baltimore uh, a little while ago, and I've been sitting here looking at yes. it. What advice would you give to a youth who wanted to get involved with Bigfoot research? Well, you know, it's um, very simple. <clears throat> you want to do your... First, you want to, to do research on the subject. Don't believe everything that's on the internet. Don't believe all the pictures are put in front of you, but you want to do your basic research first about the subject itself. One of the uh, folks that I would go to first would be Dr. Meldrum. Um, you know, he's a real, well-respected scientist from Idaho State University. You know, he's got the, the uh, field guide out. Um, and, you know, he's got a couple books out in the field guide, so or he's got a book out in a field guide. But you want to take your time um, and find some great researchers. Find the researcher that works for you, yourself, because each person is going to take research as a different way. We've known we know that now, you know. I would advise the younger youth to follow a researcher that is going for the scientific method. That's just the way that I do it. That's the way that I believe it's going to be proven is the scientific method. Um, so you can follow me. <laughs> no, seriously, I mean, follow, you can follow me, Crow. We're, you know, we're not going to give you any kind of BS type stuff. We're straightforward type of, of group, uh, the new, you know, follow folks like the New River Valley Big Board Organization, Baldemar, he's going to be speaking at the ECBRO conference, uh, ECBRO, Daniel, I mean, there's, you know, I, I don't keep up, Jack, with the folks that are in the Midwest and out West, you know why? Because they're in the Midwest and they're out West. So my chances on seeing them or ever going researching out there are zero to none. You know, right. I just go ahead and say that. So I concentrate on my area. So in, in case of Valdemar, he concentrates in Texas, you know. Um, follow a good researcher. Follow what they do. You may not agree with them all the time. Listen, I've had disagreements within my group um, with members, and we've made up. Um, you know, that's just how things, that's how things work. Good friends and good researchers may get mad at one another and may disagree on things, but in the end, the, it'll all come back and things are made up and, um, you know, things will resume back to normal. Um, things happen, and you just have to follow a good researcher. Then go to your conferences. That's what I always tell young ones is uh, go to conferences. Go to the correct conferences. There's conferences out there that are good. And I, I'm not going to name any of them, but they are phony conferences. I just want your money. Don't, do not go on expeditions that charge you money. There's absolutely no reason for somebody to charge you money to go into the wilderness. It's absolutely horrendous. Um, we never charge to go out big footing. Never. We shouldn't have to. It's, it's God's nature. It's God's world. It's free. Um, so yeah. 
get yourself to a conference, um, get on some good Facebook groups, and get on some, some watch Facebook lives, learn. There's a lot of great people out there that, that do Facebook lives that teach um, and that you can learn from. So, you know. Daniel asked Where another qu another question. Um, yes, sir. What are your thoughts on some researchers who say you don't need to read to learn nothing? Don't need to what? I'm sorry. What are your thoughts on some researchers who say you don't need to read to learn nothing? Don't need to read, as in read what? Just field got like books, books, books yeah, the, yeah, stuff like that. Here, you know. Like we said earlier, there's no Bigfoot expert, but there's a lot of folks that's been out in the field a lot longer than, than me and you, you know, that have a lot more knowledge, and you can gain your knowledge from those those people. Um, but ultimately, getting out into the field is where you're going to learn the best. And, you know, some, like I was saying earlier, some there's some hot spots and there's some that are not, you know. I think that the spot we were in was hot at one time, but it's not now. So that's my thoughts on that. Um, there's another. Uh, well, um, I believe that we already answered that question. I'm losing my train of thought here. <laughs> no, that, that's fine, man. Okay, so. I'm going to get a drink of water anyways here. But, uh, no, like I tell everybody, you pay attention, you learn the land. Daniel will tell you you need to uh, learn the wildlife, study the wildlife before you go in an area. Uh, make sure you got first aid kit, food, and water enough for about three days in case you're injured. Let people know where you're going that you trust and they won't uh, taint your uh, research, what you may have. Um, just you got to do the basics. Don't run, don't run out there and half cocked. Yeah. I'm, you know, I'm going to say this again, that, uh, you know, I'm the founder and head researcher of Micro, and we let anybody in our group, um, you know, that that's one thing I think that we're lacking something of in our Bigfoot community is a lot of female participation. And I want to try to ramp that up in 2018. And the youth participation as well, like Valdemar was saying, I'm afraid that we're going to lose this. Zach, um, you know, you're you're one of the up and coming at, at your age that, you know, I'm 42, so, and I've only been doing it for five years. You've been doing it for, what, five years? I've been doing it for about whatever, 12, yeah. almost yeah. 13. Yeah, so there you go, yeah. So, I mean, just think about it when you're 42, how much knowledge you're going to be able to share with the younger generation. Well, for, um, for about the uh, close to the first 10 years, I was just an armchair researcher because I was young. I started researching whenever I was around nine years old, whenever I first heard about Bigfoot and seen the Paris and Gimlin footage, and whenever I heard the scream of what I believed to be a Bigfoot whenever I was nine years old. And it's and I didn't start really getting out in the woods till I was old enough. Yeah, so, I yeah. mean, e like even Daniel says... The armchair researchers are the pe are not, are some of the people that have some of the big knowledge and stuff like that, and they can learn more from other eyewitness testimonies, and they can piece together sort of like a little grid of of like behavioral stuff. Like there, like I read somewhere they were following the uh, well, changes in the bear population all across the U.S. That's what I try to do. I try to take uh, well, pieces from people that. Um, are out in the West, here in the Midwest, and out there where you guys are at, and I try to find a little bit of a pattern and see um, uh, if any of the reports match, if any of the characteristics and uh, habits that are being reported match, and see if they're migrating. Right. You know, and here's the good thing, too, is, you know, you guys, the up-and-coming generation, you guys are just now getting into the killer technology age. So just think now, 20 years from now, what technology you're going to have at your hands, um, you know, to help possibly prove the existence of this creature. You know what I'm saying? Think back to the Patterson-Gimlin. They were, they were running that little 16 millimeter, I think it was. So, you know, I mean, it's uh, and now look at what we're using. So, um, yeah, and, and I think we need a, more female participation. I want to get back to that, you know. Um, there is some female Bigfoot groups out there, but I think that 
you know, that there's a hesitancy amongst females on the existence of Bigfoot or, you know, especially like my wife and, and you know, there's a lot of females out there that believe in it, you know, like Linda, Joanna, Haley. I mean, I can name off several women, Melanie, um, Kelly. So, you know, there's, but I think we need more female participation in 2018. Um, just be united, you know. Right. Let's unite. Let's unite this year, not fuss and fight. Um, like I say, uh, there's several several people I don't agree with, but you know what, I'm going to respect them. And that's just the way, you know, that that's, that's the way that we're going to further ourselves to prove this creature exists. If you fight amongst one another, it's all we're doing. That's all we're doing is fighting amongst one another. We're getting nothing accomplished. Right. I mean, especially like I tell everybody, and it's one thing I very, I'm very strong and I'm firm about. Whenever it comes to Bigfoot and check your ego at the door, there's no room for yeah. it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly, you know, because we're all out, like I said, we're all out there, we're in the woods looking for a, a, a creature that a lot of people think the only exist, doesn't exist, you know. Right. Uh, but yeah, so, you know, like I say, the Micros, a, you know, core group of us that, that are basically planted in Southwest Virginia, and, uh, you know, we, we have this sister group of the New River Valley Bigfoot Organization, uh, headed up by Tracy Arnold, which is actually is about 90-some miles up the road from me. And uh, Tracy has participated with us in the Bigfoot days. Uh, that was great. It was put on by Dr. Stamey, who was also putting on the uh, Lizard Man Festival, which I'm proud to be a part of uh, on June 8th. Uh, in Fishers, not Fishersville, Bishopsville, uh, South Carolina with Wild Blackbird. So that uh, will be there. The feature of that uh, for us as Micro will be Matt Dell's testimony. He'll be talking about that, talking about uh, the book that he's co-authored uh, and, uh, and all that. <clears throat> and then, you know, <clears throat> another thing I'd like to also point out is, uh, you know, the... Uh, the YouTube channel that we have, the Mountain Empire Cryptic Research Organization YouTube channel. I only have four videos on there. I had about 11, but I took them down because uh, they just needed to be taken down. They, well, found out to be false evidence, so we took it all down, and we kind of started over. But that's where you can see the uh, tree in the tree. That uh, is, is amazing. I suggest... Everybody go to the, my YouTube channel, Mountain Empire Cryptid Research Organization, and check that video out. Uh, and then you can also go to Darth Bill 68 and see the Bigfoot BS with Bill and Sam. Uh, some great interviews there, local interviews that, that I did. So that's kind of what's happened, Dag. I've kind of, and I think Daniel, that's why he asked that question. I've kind of, you know, become from researcher to an interviewer. Um, in a type of sense, I still research, but I like to interview people's act. That's I like to hear people's stories and what's happened to them. And uh, so, yeah, that, uh, that's about all the plugs that I've got. Well, yeah, as that's what I was going to say. It's about time to get out of here. But before we go, um, if anyone in your area that you research there in Eastern Tennessee and all abroad and your research areas, if they have any encounters or reports they would like to uh, turn into you, how can they contact you? Okay, they can contact me through Sam Deloach 75 at gmail.com okay. and it actually will come up as Mountain Empire for some reason it does come up Mountain Empire Cryptid Research organization on my email uh, that's how it's headed on my gmail but just if you type that in sam deloach d-e-l-o-a-c-h seven the number seven five at gmail.com or they can actually go to the micro facebook page just type in micro m-e-c-r-o and uh just drop us a line i encourage everybody not just to even come to me to come to you to any of, of our um, sister organizations, NRVBO, ECBRO, 
and, and submit your report. But um, especially if you're in that in their area, because it's best. It's it's going to be hard for me to research a report, let's say up there in Illinois. You know what I mean, and vice versa. So, but yeah, definitely turn turn in reports to us. And uh, I've got seven or eight that we're going to be going to look at, Zach, that we had from the uh, October uh, Bigfoot days back on October 19th to 20th. It's been so cold, Zach, that we can't get out. You know, I mean, it's just too cold right now to, to really get out. <laughs> You're telling yeah. me. Yeah, you know, and I just don't see much moving around, although we did get a lot of wildlife on our game cam, you know, some coyotes and deer and squirrel and whatnot moving around during the cold. So, who knows? Um, it was, um, and also, enjoyed. yeah. Also, what would you what ty- what shred of wisdom before we end would you give the younger generation? Well, I'll leave you with this. This is the probably the number one thing within our Bigfoot community. There's no Bigfoot experts. Is the wisdom that I can give you, and follow your heart to your research. That's all I can say. Exactly. Um, you know, that's that's. I think that's the best way to put it in 2018. Um, you know, I, I want everybody to see me, Sam Deloach and Micro and everybody in Micro um, to have the utmost class and respect for everybody that we can. And people that know me know that uh, I'm one of the greatest and easiest, uh, you know, people to get along with. And a lot of fun to be around, man. I mean, I'm not just saying that, but, you know, I, I, it's just, I love being around people, man. And like I say, that if that's what I've gotten out of this whole Bigfoot thing, Zach, is friendships, then you know what? To me, that's worth more than seeing the Bigfoot, man. You know? I mean, when you get down to it, it really is. It's, you know, the friendships that I've gotten out of this um, are just amazing and the folks that I've met. Agreed. Well, I do appreciate you coming on the show tonight, Sam. Uh, if you're oh, yeah, if you're ever in my area, uh, I'm going to be down in LBL in April uh, doing a, an investigation with Stacy Black. So um, if you can't go, if you know for sure you can't make it to the ECBRO, I do invite you to come on out to LBL. And LBL is the uh, Kentucky Tennessee. Uh, yeah. About halfway between okay. you and me. Yeah. What uh, What I need to do, uh, Zach, when um, when we get off the phone here, I'm going to give you a call. All right. All right. So yeah, definitely need to give you a call on that. But right. uh, yeah, it was great being on the show. Um, you know, this is uh, something. Uh, you know, you're 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 great, man. You're doing a great show, and it's very positive, and um, you keep it going, man. I'm behind you 100. percent and I appreciate your contribution to the Bigfoot community. It's uh, folks like you that, uh, you know, they, they, keep, they keep it going, man. Well, like I say, um, with Bob Gimlin and John Bittenagel, they're not going to be with us forever. People like you and me and Baltimore and Tracy and Matt Delph, and uh, we're the next generation. Yeah. You're, yes, you're we're passing. Right. We're, we're being passed the torch, and we got to run with it, and we got to find suitable predecessors, uh, suitable heirs to the quote unquote throne. Well said, my friend. Well said. You said it better. All right, buddy. Well, I do appreciate you coming on, and have a great evening, buddy. Thank you, Zach. I'll talk with you later. Bye bye. Bye bye. And that does it. For another episode of Backwoods Investigations, do check out Micro, Mountain Empire Cryptid Researchers Organization on Facebook. Uh, Be sure to email Sam, sam samdeloach75 at gmail.com. If you have any reports in eastern Tennessee or Kentucky, uh, North Carolina, West Virginia, Virginia, I'm sure he'd be loved to hear about you. Until then, I'll see you next time. Be 
sure to tune in next time for my next show, whenever I have my next guest. Keep a wary eye out, keep your ears to the wind, and your nose to the ground. This is Blimp signing off. Saints face watching, my friends, and I'll take you later. Happy New Year, everybody. Thank you.